On the Way Home, Part 2. July 17, 1894. Started at 840, three miles out, Russian thistles. Harvesters and poor wheat. Crossed the line into Minor County at 2 o'clock. Camp by a spring that cannot be pumped, but there is feed for the horses. Grain about 8 inches high. Will go about one and a half bushels to the acre. Hot wind. July 18th. Farmers mowing the grain for hay. At 11.30 we left Howard one mile east. Farm work well along here. Dragging for next year's crop is all done. Without troubling to take this year's crop grain off. Worst crops we have seen yet. No grass. Standing grain three inches high. Burned brown and dead. Across the Northwestern Railroad tracks at 225. Crossed the line into McCook County at 5 o'clock. Drove two and a half miles and camped. We had a little dust storm in the afternoon and drew the wagons up close together for we could not see what was coming. The wind changed from a hot south wind to a cold north wind. Both hard. Though the thermometer stood at 102 in the wagon. July 19th. It rained in the night but did not blow. Nothing in the wagons got wet except one horse blanket. We had fried chicken for breakfast and got a late start at 9.15. Weather is cool and pleasant. Wind in the north and dust laid by the rain. Groves are thick and look so nice, but farmers are mowing their grain for hay. We found a good camping place down in a ravine, out of the wind and nearly out of sight. Cooked our supper and ate it. As we were washing the dishes, a man came in and said if the man that owned the place saw us, he would make trouble. And as he lived just over the hill, we thought we'd move across the road and be all right there. So we hitched up and drove across. It was a very nice camping place. In the evening, two men came up to talk. The thermometer stood at 92. Mrs. Cooley and I went to a house to buy milk. It was swarming with children and pigs. They looked a good deal alike. July 20th. Started at 1.10. One of the coolies' horses cut his leg a little in a barbed wire fence. We left Bridgewater a half mile to the east. Mr. Cooley drove to, into town, but when we went on just south of it with the rest of the teams, and when we came to the first piece of oats worth cutting that we had seen since we left Desmet, and they are not very good. We watered the teams at a public well with windmill by the side of the road. The water is good all through McCook County. Wells are 120 feet deep on the average, and nearly every well has a windmill. This is a good county. All through McCook this year is the first crop failure in 16 years. There are lots of groves of trees and nice houses, big corn cribs, many hogs. But we have not seen many cattle, though there is a creamery in Bridgewater. The people say the corn crop is very poor, but it is the best we have ever seen at this time of year. Cross the line into Hutchison County at 10. Here they are mowing buffalo grass for hay. We passed a great pile of stones that had been cleared off the land. Saw some good wheat. Mr. Cooley overtook us at 12 o'clock when we came to a Russian settlement. He had not been able to get grain or any feed in Bridgewater, though there are three mills in the town. The Russian settlement, adobe houses, barns and chicken houses, and piles of peat to burn. The houses are back from the road and most of them are built long. The house in one end and the barn in the other. We stopped at one house for water. There was an idiot in there, a full grown man, an awful sight. We can see timber along the Jim River. It's only six miles away on our right hand, but 18 miles ahead of us. It's a nice country. But as one Russian said, Nick's good this year, Nick's good last year. We carried water in the wagons and camped without water. In a very good place except for that lack. The thermometer stood at 100 in the wagon. The road had been almost perfectly level for two days. Only now and then a small ravine, no hills. The land here is priced from $2,500 to $3,000 a quarter section. 160 acres. July 21st. Thought we would get an early start, but everything went wrong, of course. We're out of bread, so baked biscuit. 
and we made gravy with the chicken we cooked last night, poured it over the biscuits, and called it chicken pie. When we were hitching up, we let go of old pet, and she started off. Manly had the halter off little pet so she would not go after her mother. I said, whoa, and went toward her, and as soon as she saw I was coming, she ran. I could not catch her. Mr. Cooley chased her on his pony, and they were far away before he could head her. She was going to Missouri without waiting for us. We finally got started at 8.20. We were going gradually down toward the river. It was only five miles southwest of us, and there is timber thick along its bank. Harvesting and stacking is done here and plowing begun. At 10.30, the bluffs across the Jim River are in sight. At 12, we cross the line into Yankton County, and now at 2.15, we are on the Jim River Flats. And they are flat as a floor. Some grain fields are on them and meadows, and beside the road there are two natural grown trees, the first we have seen, and little scrubs they are too. 160 acres of corn are in sight on one side of the road and 80 on the other at 4 p.m. We camped on the James River down among the trees by a water mill. It's a very pleasant place, only we are not far from a family or settlement of Russians. They all seem to be one family, but Manley said he counted 36 children all the same size, and Mr. Cooley says there are 50 all under 15 years old. They come down to our camp and stand around and stare at us. The man who seems to be the head of that tribe or commune or whatever it is said they came here five years ago and now they own 17 quarter sections. They have herds of cattle, good horses, and 300 geese. Just at dusk, a boy came in with a great big fish and wanted to know if we would pay for it. The men were gone and Emma Cooley and I did not know what it was worth. The boy said we might have it for a dime, but Emma and I could not scrape up a dime between us. We were about to give up when the men came and bought the fish. In a few minutes, the boy came back with two smaller ones and wanted 15 cents for them, but finally took 10. We're going to sleep tonight to the sound of running water. Manly killed a snake this eve.